Let's go back to the beginning, Genesis 1. Genesis 1, 1. Let's see what happened. Look at your neighbor and say, what happened? <laughs> you don't have to do that. Well, some of you already did. <laughs> You've been waiting to for a while. And... So here we are, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning. In beginning. In beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the earth was formless and empty. Darkness covered the surface of the watery depths, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and he called the darkness night. Evening came, and then morning the first day. Verse 26, then God said, let us, the triune us, God the Father, God the yet born Son, God the Spirit, let us make man in our image, having the image of us, according to the likeness of us. This man will rule. He will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. That person next to you, that person on the other side of you, front and the back of you, and the person sitting in the seat that you're sitting in right now, he created them in the image of God, and he made them male, and he made them female, and God blessed them. Can you just imagine the hand of Almighty God coming up and blessing what he makes? And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. And then the end of verse 30 and then to 31, and it was so. These things that God said was so. He said them, and it was so. And God saw all that he had made and that it was not just good, but very good. <laughs> Evening came and then morning, the sixth day. Let's pray. God, you made everything, and it was good. It was very good. You proclaimed so. What happened? What happened and what can we do about it? God, I just thank you so much for your grace and your mercy, your love. Dear God, I just thank you that you give us your word to open up, to give us a glimpse of you. But God, I also am thankful that we can look around at people and even ourselves in the mirror and also get a glimpse of you as well. God, I just pray that you would take these offerings and bless them. I pray that we would be fruitful and good stewards of what it is that you provided for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes you don't even know how dry you are or how empty you are until you come into the presence of God. And that self say, same image that he sees of himself, he sees in you and communicates in that way through his spirit, through his word, through his testimony. And he communes with you and he reveals to you where you are. And nothing else can do that. You have people in your life that tell you what they think you are. But there's nothing that communicates to your spirit, to the depth of the image of God in you, that there's a void, 
a dryness, an emptiness, like coming into the presence of the living God. So I want to thank God for that today. Open your Bibles to where we were in Sunday school, Psalm 139. And we're going to read a little bit of 139, and we're going to move on to Jeremiah. And we're going to come back to 139, and then we're going to go into the New Testament and the Romans. And we're going to look at this reality that something happened. Made in the image of God, but yet whew, there's a gap there. There's a need there. There's a fix there. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, For it was you who created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made. <laughs> you know that a guy wrote this, right? I mean, a gal's going to say, okay, look, for the most part you got it right, but, you know, you could work on this and work on that and work, you know. <laughs> but a guy, he's just going to come right on out and say, what he sees in the mirror, which is always perfection. <laughs> now, I don't know why the gals use a different mirror than us, because they see imperfections left and right. But a guy's mirror, completely different thing. Gals, y'all need to get you one of them guy mirrors. They're awesome. Man, look at that. Okay, so here we are. So here's this guy, and he says, It was you who created my inner word parts. You are the one that knit me together in my mother's womb. I'm going to praise you because I've been remarkably and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know this very well. My bones were not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was formed in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw me when I was without form, much like the earth. It was there, but it was formless and void. I was there, but I, I didn't have a form yet. If you don't think there's any thought in you, if you don't think there's a plan in you, if you don't think there's a design in you, my friends, you, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. You need to read his word, and you need to allow his spirit to let you know what you are really all about. It's so much grander. It's so much better. It's so much bigger than even you will give yourself credit Four. Your eyes saw me when I was formless. All my days were written in your book. And all my days were planned before a single one of them began. <laughs> oh, boy, you think you've got a full day timer. Can you imagine the day timer of God? Every piece of humanity that was ever born, written with a stylus of God, of what the day one, two, three would be like. And he's got it all in here and in here. Hmm. What happened? Jeremiah 18 Jeremiah 18, 1. So we're going to go to the potter's house, and we've been there many times. I'm not going to go deep into it other than to just extract a little nugget. So this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down at once to the potter's house, and there I will reveal my words to you. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was. And there he was. There was the master potter. He was working away at the wheel. So he creates, and he's still at the wheel. Why? Why would you create 
and then still be at the wheel. Man, because that clay dull. What did I just say? That clay is dull. <laughs> Must be watching too many videos or something. That was bad. <laughs> so I went down to the potter's house, and there he was. He was working away at the wheel, but the jar, the pitcher, that vessel that, that was in his hands that he was making from the clay, it actually became flawed in the process. You see, because when you see a, a coffee mug or a, a cup or a pitcher or something like that, what do you think the beginning of that was? Do you, do you think it was when it came out of the furnace, when it came out of the kiln? Was it after it was formed, when it was dipped in glaze, when it was put on top of the wheel? When it was in that river bank, it was still clay in the river bank, and it was gathered up. And when did that thing begin? When did you begin? So here is this life of this vessel, and it just doesn't seem to ever get made. It's in the process of being made. So he goes in there, and he sees that here's this this thing that's being made, this vessel, and it's, and it's becoming flawed in the hands of the master. We've talked about this before. So he made it into another jar. Not something else, another jar. He had a plan for the days of that thing, and it was flawed in his hands, and he didn't make it to turn into something else, just made another jar. When you do things in your life and you put a halt to what it is that it seems like might be God's plan in your life, you just think, well, he, he can't use me now or he's not going to use me or I just might as well go into something else. In reality, that plan doesn't change for your life just because you've messed up. So there is the potter continuously working at this piece of clay that's kind of dull, that gets away from them. You know, it's, it's interesting when you put that clay on the wheel, you got to get it in the dead center because if you don't get it in the dead center, you know it's going to be out of balance. And as you, you get your hands in the water and start forming that thing, if it gets out of whack a little bit, it's, you know, have you ever seen one of those things? I I'm good at that. I can really send clay flying. The word of the Lord came to me saying, House of Israel, can I not treat you as this potter treats this clay? This is the Lord's declaration. Just like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, house of Israel, children of God. You can say it that way. At one moment I might announce concerning a nation or a kingdom that I'm going to uproot it, tear it down, and destroy it. I might say, I am done with you. However, if that nation... I have made, if that individual I have made turns from its evil, I will not bring the disaster on it that I had planned. There's grace and mercy right there. Back to Psalms 139. So let's go back a little bit before where we were earlier. Let's go back to verse 1. And then let's continue on. So in Psalm 139, verse 1, it says, Lord, you have searched me. You have known me. You, you know when I sit up. You know when I uh, sit down. You know when I stand up. You understand my thoughts from far away. He doesn't have to come and do a personal interview with you. He, he kind of knows from here. You observe my travels. You observe my rest. You're aware of all my ways. Be, before a word is on my tongue, you know about it, Lord. <laughs> that means, boom, guilty. It didn't come out, but, you know. I'm not saying that you shouldn't hold back that tongue because you can do a lot of damage with it once it gets out. But even before it gets out, God is going, mm-hmm. I know where that came from. See, you think it came from abuse and you think it came from a reaction, but I'm telling you, it came from what was in your heart. See, because how you react and how you respond to things is what's going on in here. 
a little bit in here too. Before a word is on my tongue, you know about it, Lord. You have encircled me. You have placed your hand on me. This extraordinary knowledge, God, is just beyond me. It's lofty. I, I'm not able to reach it. I don't understand it. Now let's go back to 13 where we were earlier. For it was you who created my inward parts. You are the one that knit me together in my mother's womb. And now let's go down to verse 17. God, how difficult your thoughts are are for me to comprehend. Everybody ever been there? Have you ever been there? Oh my God, how how lofty your thoughts are to me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't understand you. Now part of it is like, oh, thank God, you know, you see mercy and judgment a little bit differently than I do. But there's other things as well, and you're like, I just don't get it. It's just too lofty. It's too big. How vast the sum of these things is to me. If I counted up all these things that I don't understand, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I wake up, I'm still with you. Why? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about why, 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 God, one more chance? Why? I've sat there and thought that myself. First of all, in the midst of what I'm doing, and I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. And when I'm in the middle of that, I'm thinking, oh, mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, what have I done? I, I, I flagrantly did it. I intentionally did it. God gave me a way out. And I said, yeah, I see that little opening, God, but yeah, not today. <coughs> and then it's done. And then I ask myself, he, he's not going to forgive that. And I go to bed and I wake up and he's still with me. Have you ever wondered why? Have you ever, the times you intentionally stray, the times you intentionally feed the flesh, the times you intentionally get puffed up with pride, have you ever wondered why when you lay your head on your pillow, you wake up and he's still there? Well, join the crowd. Because that's exactly what the psalmist is saying. This is too big for me. I'm overwhelmed by it. I don't get it. If I were the one making these judgments, I would have cut me off a long time ago. But then there's something about your kids. You know, yeah, there's times when you want to strangle them, okay? That's true. This time when they want to strangle you. That's true. But let me just ask you something. What happens when it's your kid? Mm. Let's pray for just a second. God, I just want to pray that you show us in your word right now what it is that you want to show us. God, why? Why do you allow us to sin and yet call us with your spirit back again? But God, at the same time, we're thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. So there he is, still with us, verse 23. So then the psalmist says, okay, God, I want you to do something. I want you to search me. This is a beautiful part of confession and conviction of sin and also repentance. The process is like this. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. And see, dear God, if there is any offensive way in me. 
lead me in your everlasting way. Now let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8. Verse 28. The Apostle Paul kind of takes that thought and he, he runs a little bit with it. He says, we know that all things work together for the good, not good, but the good, of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of God. Just like the potter with the clay and the reshaping and the remolding it back into a useful vessel. Not changed, not different, just fixed and ready to be used again. He takes those who are in his family. He takes the children of God. He takes those who have been called. He takes those who love him. For those he foreknows, he also predestines to be conformed into this image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. It's all leading to the point one day, at your death, perfection, glorified. In the process until you die, the working at it, the justification, the bringing it about. Mm. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we just thank you for your word and um, what it says to us today about born in the image of God. And there on the potter's wheel, we, we stray, we get marred, we sin, and you're still working on us. And then, God, we see that the process is to form us back into the image of God that is a process, a sanctifying process, and, and it happens in time until that day when your children leave this earth to join you in that eternal place, then glorified, perfection totally and completely, again, back into the image of God. Help us to be encouraged by this, Father. Help us to, to be blessed by this. Help us to know, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.